Hey guys, Adam here with an updated getting started with SimHub video for 2022. The first video I posted last year, which I think was like my first video ever on this channel, is crazy long. It's more than 30 minutes. And since then, I've posted a number of videos that break a lot of that down into smaller, more detailed topics. So there have been some changes, though, to the core user interface of SimHub since I posted that video. And I want to do a very brief update if you're brand new to sim racing and to SimHub. Uh, lots of videos on my channel on all of what you can do with SimHub, what it can do, um, and how to create your own dashboards and overlays and all that stuff. So I'm not going to get into any of that today. Today I'm just going to show you real quick how to download SimHub, what you need to do, what I recommend that you do, and then get you on your way. And then you can hopefully go back if you have time or questions and watch some of my other videos that will get you through any issues that may arise. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. We are at SimHub-.com. Link is in the description below. Just go ahead and click that. It's going to take you here to the website. You want to click Download SimHub now. You'll get this big blue button right here if that's what you need to click. If you want to go through the revision history, by all means, you can do that. Um, not necessary, though. Just go ahead and download it. You're going to get a zipped file to wherever you have your browser directed to save your downloads to go ahead and extract that file click the exe and it will install sim hub for you with the last question being do you want to launch sim hub i don't recommend you do that right away though if this is your first time just go ahead and close out the installation wizard window and come back to here once you've done that so the next thing i highly recommend you do get a license you can pick your donation price go ahead click get a license whatever will email you a file uh, that will have your license number in it you just copy and paste that into sim hub i'm not going to show you how to do that part though it's very very easy because i'm not going to give away my license code although interestingly enough i do somehow own three of them i don't know why or how but i believe i have purchased multiple sim hub licenses uh probably because i thought at one point you needed to do that for multiple pcs but as it turns out one license is all you need um, so once you've done that it unlocks some things in sim hub that you don't need to have unlocked uh, the biggest thing that a lot of people are going to see is this first one right here. You're going to be able to drive your displays and Arduinos at 60 FPS. If you have a USB display, I highly recommend just locking it at 20 FPS. Uh, USB D480, especially when you go above 20 FPS, you start to get a lot of screen tearing and some weird glitches that can be avoided just simply by setting it down to 20. So do that. 10 FPS can be a little... It's, it's a little low, let's be honest, but 20 is better. Um, 24 really is as fast as the human eye can see anyway. So go ahead, get the license. I mean, you can get it for as little as 10 US dollars if you want, or, you know, whatever the exchange rate happens to be on the day that you click this button. But I recommend, please get the license, support the developer. He's doing an amazing job with SimHub, and it's a one-time fee versus something like CAPS or Race Labs or SDK, where it's a, it's a subscription-based system. You can recreate everything that CAPS and SDK and Race Labs do all right here in SimHub. Might not look as cool um, as Race Labs. I still use Race Labs, and I'm happy to pay for that subscription service because I love what he's doing. Um, the, his stuff looks a lot better than some of the things I've created in SimHub, um, and I do use those for overlays when I film my race videos, which are pretty few and far between these days. But that's besides the point. Just get the license. Please do it for me. The other thing you're going to want to do is if you have an external display or a wheel with a display or LEDs built into it, you can go right here to the resource menu and get device driver installation. All of the drivers you need linked to are going to be right here. Check with the manufacturer of whatever you've purchased um, or if it's something that you DIY'd, you're hopefully going to know which drivers you need to make that device work. Just go ahead, download the correct driver that you need for your device. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and get rid of your browser. SimHub's already installed, so we're just going to go and search our start menu, and boom. There we go. There's SimHub, so we've got it up and running. When you first launch SimHub, 
you're going to see a whole lot more games available to you than what I have right here. So what I like to do is I do, if I don't have the sim on my PC, I don't want to see it here in this list. So what I do is I always go down to the left hand settings menu. You want to go to the games tab right here and then just uncheck all of the games that you don't have. Every time Sim Hub adds another sim that it supports, you will see it pop up here automatically by default. But in order to get that, you do have to download the latest version of Sim Hub. I highly recommend you keep that up to date. It will tell you right down here in the lower left hand corner of Sim Hub what version you have. If your version is licensed, you only need to buy a license once. And then if there ever is an updated version of Sim Hub, you'll see update available right down here. And and you can click that update available. It'll take you to the Sim Hub homepage, download the update, takes a couple of minutes, and then you're good. And whatever does an amazing job of keeping things up to date, especially every time there's an iRacing patch where something changes in the telemetry, he's usually on top of it. If it's something he missed, there's an incredible Sim Hub community in the official Sim Hub Discord that will call it out and it gets fixed in the next update, which is usually very quick. And that's highly, or that's why I highly recommend purchasing the license. It's worth buying him a cup of coffee for the work that he does. So please go do that if you haven't done so already. Okay, so there we go. So we've got Sim Hub installed. We've just plugged in our wheel or our display. And right now we've just got kind of nothing but maybe the manufacturer's logo being displayed on, on our digital display unit or our wheel or whatever. If you don't have one, I'll get to how to run your dashboard there in a minute. So what we want to do is we want to go over to Dash Studio. And in Dash Studio, the first menu you're going to get to is Dashboards. And now you'll see a whole bunch of dashboards installed with SimHub by default. There is a whole lot more available out there to you, whether it is through the various Discord communities, uh, race department. I have posted a whole bunch here on YouTube videos that you can go and download and play with. Uh, I've got a video on how to import those, but since we don't want to import one right now, we're just going to take any one of these by default. Now, if you don't have a wheel with a display or a dashboard, click start menu you can run it windowed if you only have a single ultra wide monitor or if you just want to run it on one monitor if you click run windowed what will happen is the dashboard will pop up it's quite large but you can move it to wherever you want i can even move it off to one of my side displays click the x in the corner we're going to get rid of it if we want to run this on a specific monitor and make it full screen we can click specific monitor i'm going to select monitor one and hit OK, and then boom, this thing takes up the entire screen. So if you've got a fourth monitor up here like I do, uh, I do run a leaderboard up there every so once in a while, mostly for endurance events. Um, but again, just click the X, close it out. That's how you do it there. Now, if you have a display or a wheel with a Vocor or USB D480, you can click Start and hit on Vocor or USB display. Um, if you only have one display, this is fine. You can do it this way and Sim Hub will see the one display, hopefully, and then it will just start it there. But one of the biggest changes that came late in 2021, especially for USB D480 users, Sim Hub now supports up to four USB D480 displays or up to four Volt Core displays, or I believe it's up to really four of any display, any combination of those, but I think four is still the cap. Um, but what you want to do is you want to come over to this USB D480 tab, select a screen number. Um, any one of these will be fine. Click enable the screen, enable display, excuse me, and then connect to a specific screen. The second checkbox, make sure it is checked. Open up this drop down. Now, every single display that is connected to Sim Hub via USB, uh, at least every USB D480 display, because that's the menu we're in, will be shown here. Now, you won't initially know upfront if you have multiple displays connected and this is your first time launching Sim Hub, which number is which. You do have to do a bit of trial and error, but it only takes a second. I only have one connected right now, so it's the only one that's available. Set your display refresh rate to 20. 
never touch it again just go with me on that you can flip it for portrait or if you mounted your dash upside down somehow if it's a touchscreen display this box enables touchscreen uh, my grid ddu is not so i don't need to check that and then we go to this drop down menu here and we can see all of our dashboards that are available to us we can pick whatever dashboard we want go ahead and just click on it and it will start on our display now i like to check this box next idle behavior so this is when the game is not running if the dashboard that you have selected has an idle screen built into the dashboard that will display when you're not in a session then that's what will be displayed when you're not in the sim I don't like that. So I check this box and then I hit power off is the next radio button I have selected because this way it turns off the display when I'm not in the sim and this way I can lock my PC, walk away, not worry about anything being displayed on there and I'm not burning out the display because it's not being used. But if you want to have something else displayed when you're not in there, you can click idle dashboard open this menu up and you will see again all of your dashboards available to you select which one you want to have displayed when you're not in the sim and there you go you can also adjust the brightness of your display right here with this uh, slider and that does come in handy especially if you race at night in a dark room some of these displays can get awfully bright and this will help your eyes to turn it down so there we go. So now we've got our dashboard. It's up and running on our display. For Vocor, you can do the same thing. Enable the display, connect to the specific screen, click your dashboard. And I don't have any Vocor displays connected, so you'll see this device not found. Try again. And the same thing would go for this, this, or Corsair Nexus displays. We have Nexteon. You want to come down here to this. Sim Hub supports up to five Nexteon displays. I don't have any, um, so this is not of use to me at the moment. But I do have LEDs on my external DDU, so I'm going to go to the Arduino tab next. When you're in the Arduino section, you want to go over to My Hardware, and you want to make sure that single Arduino is highlighted right here. If you have multiple displays, or a, like I do, I've got a wheel with a display and LEDs, and I've got an external display with, with uh, a LEDs built in, excuse me, you'd want to check multiple Arduinos, but since I only have one connected right now, we're going to leave it at single. You'll see it right here and sim hub says it's connected if you open up this menu you can change the the serial speed and the lcd refresh speed of whatever the arduino is driving just you can leave that alone by default that's not really gonna you I mean you might hurt something so just leave it be but then once you've done that come back over to the rgb leds tab hit profile manager select the profile that you want to run and then just hit load. I've got a whole video on importing LED profiles, on creating LED profiles, um, on how to get LEDs to match car specific, um, but I've also posted profiles that have already all of this work done for you in various discords um, and in previous videos. Now iRacing does add new cars and I will on occasion update some of those profiles, but just know that they're not always perfect. There are better versions available out there at times, but that's it. That is all you need to do. So from here, we have gone our basic display, our basic dashboard set. You know, we've gone right here. We've clicked start on USB D480 if we only have one, or we've done it here. This is my preference. I always prefer to do it here now in this new menu. And then this way, you know, that's the one that's displayed on this specific screen. I've got my R RGB profile selected. I can now minimize Sim Hub, jump into iRacing, and go knowing that I will have the dashboard I selected on the display, the LEDs working, hopefully, as they should and I am good to go. There's nothing else really you need to do from this point on. You've got the basics up and running, but what if you don't have an external display? That's fine. You can use all of these dashboards here. If you don't start them windowed or you don't start them on monitors, you can make them overlays. So you wanna do that, just click more on the dashboard you want, and then you wanna hit convert to overlay. I'm not gonna do that here, but we're gonna go into the overlays tab 
and here you'll see all of the overlays that are available to you. I've got a bunch here that are more above, that are more than the default that you get with SimHub. These are all from the Gary Swallow plugin. All of these RSCs are from the Romaine Rob plugin, which I highly recommend you go check out. I'm definitely going to put a link to the description and uh, link to that in the description below. Um, he, it is it, his work is beyond impressive. Go check it out. There's a README file when you download his package that walks you through how to set it all up. Please read the README file because if you come to me with a question on getting Romain Rob's dashboards set up and his overlays and you didn't read the README file, uh, I'm going to tell you to go read it first and then come back and ask me your question because every question I have ever had on all of his work is already answered in that README file. So do it. Read the file. Um, but if you want to run any of these as overlays, so they're sitting on top of whatever sim, similar to Race Labs, Caps, SDK, um, you need to create an overlay layout. Now I did just post a video not two days ago uh, on how to create overlay layouts. I will put a link in the description below. That's just a quick five minute video on how to do all of that. And you can have everything set where you want it. So every time you launch your sim, you just launch the layout and you're good to go. So that's it. That's all I've got. This is much shorter than the video I posted last time because everything else that you would want to know, hopefully I've already got a video out there for it that's much shorter. Um, if there is something with SimHub that you still want or need to know and I didn't answer it here or in any of my other videos, please just post in the comments below and if it's a short answer, I'll respond right there. Um, if it's a longer answer, I will get a video, a walkthrough up as soon as I possibly can. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm just here to help share this knowledge of SimHub because it's an incredibly cool tool for all of us sim racers. So that's it. If this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm can connect this video with more people looking for information on SimHub because I'm just trying to help as many people as I can. SimHub is an amazing tool. The official Discord for SimHub uh, is a great community. There's a lot of information out there, but there's so much that you can do with SimHub. It is really hard to condense all of that information into a wiki or a Discord or a forum, whatever you have. Um, so that's what these videos are for that I've been posting, just trying to help people out. And if there is anything else that I can help you with, just please let me know. So until then, stay safe out there and we'll see you next time.